Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. Real Madrid have dispersed Sevilla in an exhilarating end-to-end -end encounter. And what can we say? We are witnessing remontada after remontada after remontada. We can't get enough of it at the moment. The past few games have been absolutely haywire. And the only thing that has remained constant is Real Madrid coming out on top despite all the challenges. You feel we are heading towards a disaster. We are too old three goals down and you think surely Real Madrid can't come back from this situation but no you can't you simply can't take away the Maradismo spirit from the players at this point the players believe that nothing is beyond them and that is exactly what we saw against Sevilla we look like a shadow of ourselves in the first half in fact all of us had our blood boiling with rage seeing the first half display but in the second Real Madrid showed some exemplary football some of the best football that Real Madrid have shown all season and to finish off Sevilla in the way that they did was simply marvelous it was another roller coaster ride, and Real Madrid showcased why they would be the deserved champions come the end of the campaign. So, in this video, we'll do the post match analysis of Real Madrid versus Sevilla. We'll talk about the important happenings of the game, and without further ado, let's get started. And having a look at the lineup, there was Cotwine Goal. In the back four, we had Alaba, Carvajal, Lucas Vasquez, and Militao. In the midfield, we had Modric, Cruz, Camvinga, and Valverde. And finally, in attack, we had Vinicius and Karim Benzema. And I'll skip the shout-out section today because none of you had predicted a 3-2 scoreline in favour of Real Madrid. But sharing some thoughts on the starting eleven, the first thing that came to our mind was how Lucas Vasquez and Danny Carvajal were going to fit in the setup. Who was going to slot in the left-back position and as things turned out, it was Carvajal who had been entrusted with the more difficult task of playing on the left. We were expecting Nacho to start but Ancelotti probably didn't deem Nacho fit enough to start this high-profile match and Carvajal was responsible to cover the left-hand side of the park. And if you just talk about the positions that Carvajal has played in the last few games, he has played as a centre-back, he of course played as a right-back and yesterday he completed the trifecta by playing the left-back position as well. And we have to lord Carvajal for showing the versatility to play in multiple positions. When the coach needed him, he was there responding to the call and it's not like he has played bad being out of position. If you remember the Chelsea game, amazingly, we were able to keep a clean sheet in extra time with Carvajal, Marcelo and Lucas Vasquez in the back line. And that in itself is a great accomplishment in my opinion. Opinion. But anyways, if we strictly analyse the performance against Sevilla in the first half, he had some nice link-up play with Vinicius on the left, almost played as an inverted left-back at times, but honestly speaking, none of the players were really up to the mark in the first. It was in the second half that Carvajal upped his level. For the first goal, he linked up with Vinicius in the penalty box. With quick exchange of passes, the two were able to baffle the Sevilla defenders. Carvajal had just enough room and time to put in a left-footed cross. And once again, it was Rodrigo, the young Brazilian superstar, who popped up in the right place at the right time. He has the nag of making a difference coming off the bench and Rodrigo is really enhancing his stock by playing these match-winning cameos for Real Madrid. But coming back to Carvajal, he was also involved in providing the assist for the equaliser, thereby having two assists in one match for the first time in his La Liga career. So thumbs up to Danny Carvajal, we have been really concerned with his form of late, but the Spanian has picked up form right in time for the big games and hopefully he'll keep up the good work in the mega months ahead. And speaking about the first half in general, we can say Real Madrid were totally off the pace in the first half. They were lethargic, they were disoriented, they were losing duels, they were unable to keep hold of the ball. And Sevilla, on the other hand, were getting rallied by the roaring crowd. They attacked Real Madrid with high spirits and Real Madrid just didn't have any answer. They were making uncharacteristic passes, Modric as well was giving away the ball cheaply at times. And the lack of focus came back to bite us in the end. You can see the lack of focus in the first goal that we conceded. It was schoolboy defending from the players, the players in the wall had a simple task to stand close to each other and jump in unison but Militao and Alaba made an absolute hash of the situation. I still can't understand why Militao had the urge to take a step forward, come out of the wall and then stick his leg out to stop the shot. All he had to do was to stand there close to the other players and ensure there was no gap in the wall but unfortunately he failed to do so and the complaining after the error was not really a pleasant sight to watch. It was a classic case of players not having the focus required in these big games and coming to the second goal Militao was one again at fault as he was caught out of position and was muscled off the ball by the Sevilla man. Once again the defence crumbled under the high press of Sevilla and arrivals were off to a flying start in the match. So summarising the first half performance, Madrid had no coordination, they didn't press well enough, they had no penetration on the wings. We mostly saw Lucas Vasquez trying to cover the areas 
on the right wing, while Verde it looked had much more of a restrained role staying back to cover for Vasquez, but Real Madrid were missing the cutting edge in attack on both the wings. Camavinga as well was very lucky to not receive a second yellow card. This was a big game for the youngster, but he couldn't really leave a mark. He still looks a bit too eager to go for challenges. Tackling is an area that Camavinga needs to improve upon, and Ancelotti seeing Camavinga make these errors saw it more viable to take the Frenchman off at half time. And coming to the second half, this was where Real Madrid were a completely different animal. They upped the intensity, they were playing with swagger, they showed some brilliant movement and link up play. Cruz was shifted to the position of a defensive midfielder, Modric played on the left, and Real Madrid came out guns blazing. The substitutions that Ancelotti made had a huge impact in the game. Not only did Rodrigo provide an extra spark, Nacho as well made a valuable contribution coming off the bench. It could have been a difficult task, especially after Real Madrid were feeling robbed after the Vinicius handball incident. In my view, the goal should have stood, but the referee, even after having a look at it from multiple angles, decided to chalk off the goal. We can all agree the refereeing was way below par for the game where the stakes were so high, but in spite of the setback, Real Madrid kept their mental grit. They kept attacking right till the final minute, they had the flame burning in them, that getting a winner was very much possible, and how fitting was it that Benzema was the man to put the final nail in the coffin for Sevilla. So it was an amazing comeback, you would struggle to catch a breath watching the action packed proceedings. Things could have gone really bad for Madrid, but our players kept the honour of the club intact. They ensured that none of the rivals got the pleasure of watching a slip up, and the Los Blancos became the first team in La Liga to beat Sevilla at home this season. So those are my thoughts on the game, and let's conclude this video by hearing the post-match thoughts of Carlo Ancelotti. The coach analysed the performance of the team as he said, the first half performance was the coach's fault and the second half was down to the player's quality. We didn't lose our head, we put a few things right that weren't going well. We weren't solid enough when it came to recovery in the first half. They probed two or three times in transition and a progression wasn't right, so we changed two or three things. He further said, in the first half we looked a tired team and then the intensity in the second half was amazing. Sometimes in football you can't put your finger on these things. I also don't understand the interpretation of Diego Carlos's handball and Vinicius's handball. It's difficult to comprehend the first half performance and subsequently the second half as we played with high level of intensity, concentration and a great attitude. Nothing surprises me about this team. I'm very proud of the second half performance. I must thank all the players for that. And lastly, Ancelotti was asked if Rodrigo was better off coming on as a super sub. And Ancelotti responded, I suppose that's what the stats say, but he's also going to be a great starter. It's similar to Kavinga, but both of them can make a difference from the start as well as from the bench. So that concludes the post-match analysis of Real Madrid vs Sevilla. Do let me know what were your thoughts on the game and what were the things that caught your eye right in the comments below. I'll see you soon. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid, and as always, a la Madrid.